How do you choose the best solar battery? With dozens of new options on the market, it can be intimidating and overwhelming. In today's video, I'm gonna be teaching you five things to consider to choose the best solar battery for your system. Hi everyone, Joe Ordia here for Solar Surge, and for the past 12 years I've been helping families achieve energy independence using clean renewable energy. Now if you're new to the Solar Surge channel, on Solar Surge you're going to find reviews of solar panels, batteries, inverters, uh, pretty much any piece of technology that makes up a home renewable energy system. Now in this video I'm going to be teaching you five things to consider when choosing the best solar battery for your home system. Now, the first thing that you're going to want to look at is power. What is the continuous power rating of the battery? And also, what is the peak surge power rating for the battery as well? Now, when we talk about power, and when we measure power, we're talking about watts or kilowatts. A kilowatt is just a thousand watts. And what this is talking about is how much instantaneous power can I draw out of the battery at any one time? This is going to directly correlate to how many appliances in my home can I run simultaneously when I'm running on battery backup power? So for those of you that are looking for a true whole house backup, including things like air conditioning units, maybe electric ovens, electric clothes dryers, you're gonna want a battery that offers high power or a battery system that offers overall high power if you wanna be able to run multiple of those heavy loads simultaneously. Now, the other thing is, what is the peak surge power of the battery? Because oftentimes, large inductive loads, which are typically electric motors, like air conditioning compressors, um, typically these type of appliances require a high inrush current for the first few seconds when the motor is first starting up. Sometimes you can even hear that, almost sounds like that kind of like magnetic or electric sound when a, an air conditioning unit is first starting up. That is the inrush current. And so the higher surge power that the battery offers, the more of that inrush current it's going to be able to provide. And by the way, that, that typically is the Achilles heel of a home battery backup system, is high amperage motor startup, particularly air conditioning compressors. So if you're looking for a battery that can handle whole house backup with, with high surge for air conditioning starts, then look for a battery with high surge power. Um, as of this recording in December 2023, the top batteries that come to mind in that area would be the new Tesla Powerwall 3, as well as the Franklin Whole Home battery, uh, as well as the Home Grid battery paired with a Solark inverter. All three of those solutions offer very high surge power. Of course, Enphase's new IQ Battery 5P, uh, they've doubled their surge power from the previous generation. So if you have a system with, with three or more of those batteries installed, you'll have an overall system with adequate for whole house backup with high uh, startup surge capacity. Now, the second thing you're gonna wanna look at is what is the storage capacity of the battery? And storage capacity, we're measuring that in kilowatt hours. So it's different from kilowatts. Kilowatts is an instantaneous power rating. Kilowatt hours is a measure of total energy usage or total energy storage. So you can kind of think of it as your power rating is like the speedometer on your car. It's, tell, it's telling you how fast you're going at that, at that instant. The, the kilowatt hour capacity is more like the fuel tank in your car. It tells you how much running time you have, how much total range do you have. And so that's really what it's telling you is how much total energy can you store in the battery? And then that's going to correlate to how long you can run your appliances. You know, whether you're running just a small subset of your appliances, what we would, we would call the critical loads, uh, or if you're running a whole house backup, the more kilowatt hours storage capacity you have, the longer you can run that battery system. Now, to put it in perspective, the average American home right now consumes about 30 kilowatt hours of storage per day. So for the average home, if you wanted a system that gave you a 24 hour or a, a one day's worth of running time on a, on a single battery charge, then you want approximately 30 kilowatt hours of battery storage. The third thing you're gonna wanna look at is the warranty. Uh, and this is especially true if you're, you're looking to make use of your battery on a daily basis. So for those of you watching this that are in California under NEM3 or other markets where you intend to take advantage of rate arbitrage, you can charge your battery when it's cheap or charge your battery from solar and then in some cases run off the battery or sell the energy in your battery to the power company when you can do so at a profitable rate. 
then the warranty is something you really wanna take a look at. Look at both what is the warranty in terms of years. Right now, most of the leading batteries are offering a minimum 10 year warranty. I know Franklin offers a 12 year warranty and Enphase just up theirs to 15 years. What you're also gonna to wanna to look at is what is the throughput capacity of the warranty. So sometimes what the, the battery manufacturer will do is they'll, they'll warrant the battery for a certain number of years, but then also up to a certain number of kilowatt hours of throughput. Meaning if you charge a certain amount and then drain a certain amount, th th that is energy throughput in the battery. So make sure you check the fine print uh, to see if you're gonna get capped, potentially capped by hitting that throughput limit before you hit the time limit. Now the fourth thing you're gonna wanna look take a look at is the battery chemistry. Uh, right now there are two prevalent battery chemistries for home batteries. There's the slightly older lithium NMC, which is used by the Tesla Powerwall 2 and the Solar Edge home battery. And then there's the newer, what's also considered the safer, more durable uh, lithium uh, ferrol phosphate or lithium iron phosphate, LFP chemistry. Uh, the LFP chemistry tends to be a little bit more bulky, a little bit heavier, and a little bit more space that it takes up. Um, but it does, in theory, offer a more durable battery and a battery that runs at a cooler temperature, and so it's preferred for home use because of there being virtually no or, or much lower uh, threat of the, uh, the battery catching on fire. So when you look at a lithium NMC battery, uh, the advantages of lithium NMC are it's lighter weight, it requires less less unit of volume, right, per unit of energy store. So it's more energy dense. Um, it also allows for slightly higher surge output. And that's why this chemistry is particularly preferred in electric vehicles, where you may need to dump a lot of energy fast to accelerate the vehicle. However, the downside is that the chemistry can overheat. And there have been a few cases of what's called thermal runaway, where basically one of the battery cells overheats, which causes a chain reaction where the whole, the whole battery catches on fire. And although it's been very, very rare that that's happened, for that reason, that, the, that chemistry is considered not quite as desirable for use in the home. Now, the lithium iron phosphate chemistry, on the other hand, as I said, it's a little bit bulkier and it's a little bit heavier. Um, however, it runs much cooler temperature-wise. And so it's considered the much safer chemistry for indoor use. Also in theory is a more durable battery. So if you, again, if you're intending to use your battery for daily use, where you're gonna cycle the battery every day, then the LFP, the lithium iron phosphate chemistry is considered the more preferable chemistry. And then finally, of course, you need to consider the cost. A convenient way to compare battery cost is actually to do it in a cost per kilowatt hour basis. Since there are many different battery options on the market that are coming in at different sizes, for example, you have Franklin's battery at 13.6 kilowatt hours per battery versus Enphase's battery at only five kilowatt hours per battery, if you're looking at the newest model, means that you may need to price compare two or three of the Enphase battery to compared to one of Franklin's batteries to get to a similar cost per kilowatt hour. So the easiest way to do that is just take the total cost of the proposed battery installation, divide it by the total kilowatt hour storage of the battery system, and that will give you a figure in terms of cost per kilowatt hour, which you can use to do a, a more, more easy apples to apples comparison between different battery options. However, what you also need to consider is what other parts uh, and what other features and functions make up the solar ecosystem. And when I say the solar ecosystem, what I mean is there, there's a trend in the industry right now to have everything operating on one platform, on one software, on one app, where it's the inverter that becomes sort of the central part of that system. So you might have a solar edge inverter, you might have an Enphase micro inverter system. And then from there, you may add on other components like a battery or an EV charger or a load controller. Uh, or in some cases, they even give you a generator hookup option as well. But one thing you want to consider when choosing the battery is which ecosystem do you want to be a part of? Because what I'm seeing, and I think that the way this is going to go, is that consumers and installers are going to prefer to have everything from one manufacturer. So there's one app for the entire system. There's one customer support number to call for the entire system. And everything is just sort of nicely integrated in speaking with each other. So you, maybe you want to be on the Tesla platform. Uh, maybe you want to be on the Enphase platform, or maybe you want to be on the Solar Edge Home platform, 
If that's the case, it may make sense to just go with that brand battery, even though technically there, there are ways that you can, you can interoperate batteries and inverters from different companies. From an overall user experience and an overall installer experience, I think most consumers are gonna be best served with keeping everything on one platform. Well, folks, this has been a brief discussion of how to choose the best solar battery. Um, of course, if you're in the process of looking at different solar and battery options for your home, uh, if you need to get a price quote, or maybe you already have a quote and you need to get a comparison quote to make sure that you're getting the right equipment or that you're getting the best deal, uh, as always, you can feel free to reach out to us on the link below, set up a call with one of our solar experts, and we'd be happy to get some pricing and some information for you. Uh, of course, if you're getting good value from these videos that we publish on the channel, make sure you hit the thumbs up button. Uh, and also go ahead and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. That way, as we have the new videos coming out, it'll come up on your homepage and you can stay up to date with us. Right now, we're, we're putting out about three videos like this every week. Well, I thank you all for spending some more time with Solar Surge. As always, I'm Joe Ordia here, encouraging you to get prepared and be empowered. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again soon. All right. I hope you're getting some great value from today's video content. Now, if you would like to have your product or your business or technology featured on the Solar Surge channel, feel free to reach out to us at the link below so you can set up a call with our media team to talk about your marketing goals and how Solar Surge can help you get there. Solar Surge is the leading online community in the US residential solar and energy storage space. And so if you'd like to get your product, business, or technology in front of our audience, we can help you do that. Uh, again, feel free to reach out to our media team at the link below or email media at solarsurge.net.